We homeschool without a curriculum, and today I want to share some of our favorite math resources with you. Hi guys, I'm Chantelle, and I blog over at Intentional Homeschooling, and I'm starting, or kind of started last week, I guess, a series here on YouTube sharing um, how we teach each subject to our kids without a curriculum. Um, I know it can be easy to get hung up on the idea of using a curriculum, and we don't use one, so each week, um, every Friday for the next while, I am going to be sharing one particular subject and some of our favorite resources in that subject. So just like you teach toddlers how to count and their numbers, I feel like math is so easy to teach kids, but for whatever reason, like the way it is taught in schools, I think is the real reason, um, we get hung up on the idea that math has to be a sitting down, like pencil and paper, kind of activity uh, subject and I don't think it has to be that at all. Math, I mean like every subject honestly, but math is really one of those subjects where you know it's, it's all around you. My kids when they get their allowance they're constantly adding up how much money they have and figuring out okay I want this, usually a Lego set, um, how much more money do I need until I have enough money for this Lego set? You know, they do multiplication when they think, okay, I get this much money each month and how many more months until I have like this much money? You know, math is just something that is constantly used in our everyday lives and I feel like that is my preferred way to teach that to my kids. That all being said, like I do use like a number of different resources. Generally, I try to make them really fun and I do want to share those with you. So if you've seen any of my like resource hauls or like my, um, any of my other videos, you know that we're like big into games, especially fun family games. And games are such a great way to learn math. Um, I didn't pull them out, but like games like Monopoly and Payday, you know, ones where you're rolling a dice, you're figuring out the numbers and how to move along a board. If there's um, multiple dice, then you're also learning doubles and you're learning addition. Uh, it games like Monopoly when there's money involved, you know, you're doing your adding and subtracting up to hundreds and sometimes thousands. So there's games like those are really good for that kind of thing. And then games like hard games like Skippo, Uno, those are really good for different number learning as well. Um, I didn't pull those out here. I tried to go with games that were a little bit different, I guess, out of the norm. Uh, but those just note that those are really great for learning math as well. Okay, so the first game that I have here is Sushi Go. So in this game, you have a bunch of different cards. And you get points based on the cards that you have in front of you that you've um, collected and they you earn different points for different things so here for dumpling you earn points based on um, so if you have one dumpling card you get one point if you have two you get three points if you have three you get six points and so on and so forth so you realize like the more you have the better it is for you and so like that's how that one works um, some of these like pudding you know you get um, your points based on who has the most or the least by the end of the game so if you have the most, you get plus six, and if you have the least, you get minus six. Uh, there's different ones where you can have, if you have three of these, then you get 10 points. So there's all sorts of different ways to figure out like um, which ones you wanna collect to figure out how you can get the most points. And then just the adding up of your points at the end is huge. Like there is so much math involved in this. Actually really related to Sushi Go, I feel like is Bonanza. So this is also known as the bean game. And in this you're kind of doing the same thing. You're collecting different bean fields and you want generally a lot of beans in your field because then you get more points. And so these things, has the same idea, so you get points based on, you know, if you have, here for this one, if you have if you have two of them, you get one coin, if you have four of them, you get two coins, if you have six of them, you get three, and if you have seven, you get four. So that's how that works, and they're all different based on like the different types of beans and types of fields. And then um, over here, it has a number, each card has their own number, and that is like the probability. Um, I think that might be it. Yeah, that's like the probability of them coming up, I think. I've never actually checked this. This might actually be the number of how many are in the deck, I'm pretty sure. But, so you'll see that ones that are um, more commonly found, let's see. So something like the blue bean, like it has a 20 on it, so you don't get as many points for that. 
Whereas if you compare that to something like the cocoa bean, this one only has a few in the deck, then you get a lot more points for a few of them. Um, so this is really good for math as well. It's really good for teaching kids probability and the likelihood of cards coming up and you know if they also can eventually keep track of like okay so I've seen three other cocoa beans go out so I know mine is the last one or whatever then they can you know figure out if they want to be keeping those or not. Another really fun math game is King Domino. We bought this one actually like fairly recently I guess in the winter or whatever and so in this one you are trying to build a kingdom and you add your points based on, I'll get it ready here, based on how many crowns you have. So let's say you have like this kind of land, whatever that is, and it has one crown on it, and you have it next to, let's say, another one that's the same kind of land. Then you take your crown and you times it by how many of that field you have or that piece of land. So here it would be one times two. But some of these have, okay, so some of them have two crowns. And let's say you have this piece of land there. So now you're going, oh, I almost dropped the whole box. Now you're going two times two. And let's say, let's see if I can find another one. Let's say you got another one here. And now suddenly you're going two times three, because there's three of the same touching. So this really works well for multiplication. And then at the end, you know, you have to like do all the multiplication and then add up all the numbers that you've multiplied together. And it's, it's actually pretty advanced. Like you can do it with younger kids because they can understand the general concept, but then you kind of help them add up their points. And then as kids are older, then they can add up their own points. I shared this general book in my um, language arts video. This is the math book. So everything you need to ace math. Now this is, I feel like it's just like a resource is what it is. So it just has information on all sorts of different kinds of math. So this one is adding positives and negative numbers. Um, let's see, solving and graphing inequalities. So this is like more middle grade kind of book, but it's exponents, tables and ratios, multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers, multiplying and dividing fractions, greatest common factor, so there's just, there's tons of different topics in here and it's kind of written like a workbook. I think it's a little too bright to focus. Um, there are like pages where you can fill in, but I think my goal here is just to use this as a resource. Like if my kids want to learn a topic, then we can look it up and figure out how to do it and then go from there. This one is not one that we own, but we recently got it from the library. And this is the Osborne Money for Beginners. And um, money is kind of an interesting topic, but it has like all sorts of different topics in here that maybe aren't interesting. So this section is about um, charities and raising money for charities and ch how to choose a charity. And I just noticed my daughter the other day pouring over these pages and she said it was so interesting. And I think the way that they have made this book and like, I think this is kind of like a series um, they've made it so that they can take topics that kids would normally find boring and make them interesting. And so there's like a little bit of history of the coin, um, illegal ways to make money, um, yeah, talking about taxes, uh, overspending, budgeting, credit ratings. There's a lot of information in here and my fifth grader was really enthralled by this book. These next two kind of go together. So let's start with this one. This is bedtime math. So. Uh, we have gotten these out from the library many, many times, and eventually I just like finally bought this one, and I would like to buy the rest of the series too. So what this is, is it comes with like a funny little story. And then related to that story, they have three different questions plus a bonus, depending on the level of your kid or like the age of your kid. So you read the story, and then, so the question for we ones here is how many teeth are running away from the girl in the picture? So the kids just have to count. For little kids, it says, how many legs do those crazy teeth have all together? So then you're counting the legs. So you could either, you know, multiply by going like five times two legs, or you could just count them. And then big kids, most mammals like dogs, rabbits, and beavers lose their baby teeth too. If this year you lose nine teeth and next year you lose three more and your dog loses seven, how many teeth did you lose together? So like it's getting harder. And then there's a bonus. Anteaters don't 
need teeth at all. If there are 38 picnickers at a picnic and half are people and the other half are anteaters, how many picnickers have no teeth? So this is just a really creative way to um, do math. And I, the idea here, I think, is like you do one a day before bedtime or whatever. Um, but we will often just like pick this up and go through and like read five of them together until my kids are like over it and then we move on. So in that same vein, um, this is how many guinea pigs can fit on an airplane. So this is the same general idea. So this question here is how many times do dog takes how many times do dogs take baths in a year? And then there's like a little bit of a write-up about it. And then there is like a math problem involved. So it says here, they need at least one bath every three months. How many baths is that in a year? And a year has 12 months. So then here they show you how to work it out. Um, that one was a little more basic than some of the other ones on here. So this question is how many, how much does an elephant eat in a year? And it gives you like the background information that you need and then it shows you kind of like how to figure it out. And so these are like more from middle grade whereas I feel like a lot of the bedtime math stuff is more elementary slash lower middle grade and this is kind of like after that. Um, a fun series is the math books by Greg Tang. He kind of writes like rhymes and it's got like math information in there. I keep hitting my uh, little greenhouse here. So yeah, like that. This one says, a frog gone. It's roll call at the local bog. Can you count each friendly frog? Some are sitting calm and pleasant. Some are swimming. They're not present. Here's a tip to help you add. Don't ignore a lily pad. And then it has a picture to go with it. And then you have to use the information in the little poem and the picture to figure out how many frogs each friendly frog. And there's different, um, all sorts of different options in here. So he has quite a few books. He's got The Grapes of Math, that one's really good. The Best of Times, so that's all about like learning different ways to multiply things. And then Math for All Seasons. And then this one is Math Appeal. Uh, they're really fun to go over. They make kids think about math in a different way than they often would. And it's really good for like visual learners because you, you look at the picture and then you try to figure out the answer based on the picture instead of like just using numbers all the time. So for younger kids, one of the things I like to do for numbers, especially when they're learning to count, is dot to dots. And I feel like dot to dots really never get old if you can find good resources. So I really like these extreme dot to dot books because they have like, this is one picture here and there are like hundreds of dots. Um, in the back, they have the actual pictures. So some of these have 300 dots, some have 873, some have 560. Uh, what's the highest one here? 920, 1460. I think that's the biggest one. And so this is really good for when you want kids to learn to count over 100. Um, yeah, and it's also like good for fine motor skills. It has lots of other benefits as well, but this is a really fun way to do it, I think. Okay, then this is my last resource, which is kind of like four books. Um, once again, like Osborne just knocks it out of the park. So we have a bunch of these lift the flap books. So this is telling the time, um, questions and answers about time, fractions and decimals, and then we have times tables. So I th they just write, this book is kind of falling apart. They just write things in a, such an interesting way. We got like pirates. This, the captain makes seven pirates walk the plank each day. How many pirates is that in two days? You know, and then there's lift, lift the flap stuff for your answers. So here, this one says, every dash on the map equals seven paces. The path to the treasure has 12 dashes. How many paces is that? So you figure out seven times 12 is 84. Um, so yeah, they just do a great, great job of making math interesting, visually interesting. So this one is fractions, sorting fractions, decimals, things that can be hard for kids to learn, but like with the use of a visual and a fun visual at that, like this one is all about percentages and chocolate truffles and toffee truffles and squares and nut clusters. Like if you're going to have an interesting topic like that, plus, um, lift the flaps, which way does this flap go? Like it shows you this is 16 out of 100 right here. So 16%. Um, I just love all their books. 
show you inside this questions and answers about time. This is all about digital clocks. How many hours make a day? 24. How many minutes make an hour? 60. How many seconds make a minute? 60. There's just all sorts of questions about time in here. Obviously questions and answers about time. And then this one is about learning to tell time. So there's a bunch of different um, digital and analog clocks throughout here. Start with analog and then they go into digital. Yeah, so it's just, it's like kind of tells it in a bit of a story, like really short stories, just keeps kids' attention. And I really appreciate that. Anything that can make learning fun um, is really useful. And I feel like that's what learning should be. Um, yeah, okay, so those are some of our favorite math resources. I guess one thing I didn't mention, like when I was talking about, you know, like learning math through your everyday life and allowance and stuff. I also didn't mention baking, but that's a huge one. You know, getting kids to um, use the measuring cups and figure out the fractions. And that's, there's so many opportunities in the day with time um, for kids to do different math activities that they don't need to like sit down and write it all out. Funny enough, I don't know if every math teacher said this or if it was just my math teacher, but the general idea when I was in school was that you're not going to have a calculator in your back pocket all the time. So that's why you need to memorize like your multiplication tables and all that stuff. How many of us walk around with a phone in our back pocket all the time now? Like, I'm sorry, math teacher, but you're wrong. Like we do, we have it. It's not as necessary for us to memorize this stuff um, as it used to be. It's kind of like back in Laura Ingalls Wilder's day, um, to become a teacher, you had to know all this information and memorize all this stuff. And now we have Google, like it's great to know stuff, but you don't have to memorize as much as you used to. And so that's kind of where I fall with math. Like I want my, I want my kids to know how to figure things out. I don't want to, them necessarily just to memorize everything. Um, yeah, so those are some of the ways we go about it in our home. Um, if you have like other math resources that you really enjoy that I haven't mentioned, um, let me know because I would love to check out more awesome resources and stay tuned for next week. Um, I think my plan is either to do history or science. I haven't decided. If you have an opinion on which subject you would like me to talk about next, let me know. Otherwise, I will probably pick between those two. Uh, yeah, so I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching guys.